So today I'm going to tell you quickly um, a suggestion of books to get if you're a beginner. So um, let's go ahead and start with, I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. So the first one would be Suzuki, book one for violin. You can all, actually, if you're a violist, you can kind of do the same thing. Some of these books are also for a viola. After that, you need a technique book. So, because we want to be able to get around the instrument, become familiar with different key signatures. So this is going to be kind of a tricky thing. When you first start, I would maybe do this when you're kind of a few songs into Suzuki book violin one, um, maybe like midway through. Just start adding some of these. Everyone's different, you know. You'll be able to tell whether it's crazy hard or it's kind of doable. Along with that, you're going to have um, Shradiak. And mine is so old and decrepit. I don't even think I have the first page anymore. Where's my first page? Well, <laughs> I'll just show you kind of what it looks like. Come on, I don't have the first page. This is the second page, okay? So it's just very, very noty. It, it looks very hard, but it's going to help you um, strengthen your fingers. It's gonna help strengthen your ear and strengthen certain hand patterns that you're gonna be um, dealing with a lot. So basic hand pattern, low two, extended third finger, things like that are gonna be in here. And then you've got, when you're a little bit more advanced, I would say when you're done with the um, this first etude book, the first etude album, when you're kind of finding this is easy, then I would move on to Wolfheart. And Wolfheart is going to be, this is actually book two, so it might look a little bit scary. I don't know where my book one is, but they're just kind of a little bit harder things that you're going to be dealing with. This actually is great. You can get this um, in book one and two in the same thing. So you have all of them. You can also print this out for free on IMSLP, so .org. Lots of free music on that. And you can also at the same time be working in um, Suzuki book two and three. At this point, if you're kind of doing Wolf Hard, I would be playing in Suzuki book two or three at that point, and four maybe. Um, this is some, since it's the holidays, this is a great holiday book of Christmas songs. They're fairly easy and they um, have the chords and they also have a second violin part for them. So if you have a friend who plays or someone who plays the piano or guitar, they can um, play along with you really easily. So they just are super, they're, they're very easy. So. Um, this is called A Fiddler's Christmas by Craig Duncan. It's great. And if you wanted something to kind of shake it up a little bit with Suzuki, I would definitely recommend fiddle music. It'll really get you around the instrument. This is a great book. It's enormous. You see how big it is in comparison to my head. <laughs> Um, this is great. This is called The Fiddler's Fake Book. Lots of things in here. And um, they're not that tricky, but they're good. Some of them are trickier than others. And then finally, I would recommend taking a look at the Waltz books by um, Bill Matheson. Matheson. There's a, there's a few of these. I just um, made a stupid video talking about these, <laughs> but there's three, at least, I think there's at least three of these, and they're great. Um, you can play this if you're in Suzuki Book 1 really easily. So, and it also has the chords. It doesn't have a second violin part, but it has the chords, and it's, these would be great if you're interested in kind of working on improvisation as well, or playing chords yourself, things like that. So, um, those are just some suggestions. I would highly suggest that you study with a teacher. <laughs> Don't try and like do this on your own. Um, maybe just like try, if, if anything, if you're serious about it, you really should have a teacher. But if anything, just try to get some lessons here and there with someone just to make sure you're on the right path and you're doing it right because you know, you're spending time practicing and do you want to be practicing like this? What if you have been practicing like this for like five years? All that struggle and toil, you know, and then you go to a lesson and, and your teacher's like, you know what, you're doing this all wrong. You need to 
we need to change this. So you've spent five years doing it like that and you could have been doing it correctly for five years, you know what I mean? So um, anyway, those are some suggestions. You also need to be doing scales or hand pattern work, things like that, in addition to all this. So I don't have a scale book that I use for um, my beginners or um, students that are up to kind of Suzuki book four or five. I don't really um, use a scale book. We just kind of do scales in first position and in um, two octave scales, three octave scales to a point. Um, up to maybe like third position, things like that. Mostly two octave scales and arpeggios and thirds and working with metro a metronome and things. So those are invaluable. <laughs> Do your scales. Okay, and ear training as well. This is just like a sporadic video. You have to be working on your ear training. If you cannot play Do, Re, Mi in tune, Do, Re, Mi, just whole steps, open one, two in the basic hand pattern or one, two, three in the extended third finger or in the low two, two, three, four. If you can't play Do, Re, Mi in tune consistently all the time, then we have a problem. How are you gonna play anything in tune, right? So I hope that didn't burst your bubble. <laughs> it's just, um, these are some suggestions for you. Food for thought, chew on it, digest it, and hopefully that helps.